So welcome along to some um, example NMR problems. Uh, what we do is there's a few spectra that are going to appear, uh, which hopefully you've worked out already. If not, if you pause it before I start uh, telling you the answers, um, and then restart it, and I'll explain how we assign the spectrum and get the structure identified. So we've got to find the identity of this uh, compound here. So we've been told it's C4H8O. So what are options? Well, it's going to be uh, possibly a cyclic alcohol uh, from that formula. Um, it could be a, a ketone or an aldehyde as well. Um, I'm going to hazard a guess that uh, it's going to be a ketone or an aldehyde. And um, we'll see if we can assign it based on that. So I've got four carbons. Um, is it going to be an aldehyde, first of all? Well, if I look at my uh, proton NMR, if it's an aldehyde, I'd expect to see a uh, peak around, well, between 9 and 10 ppm for the aldehyde hydrogen. And it doesn't look like I've got one there. This area is uh, completely and utterly clear. So nothing there at all. So what have I got? Well, I've got three main peaks. Um, and from the little area that's been expanded there, I've got a triplet and a quartet. So it's not an aldehyde. So let's have a, just play around. Let's have a go at some ketones, first of all. So one ketone, it could be, is uh, CH3. C double bond O, CH2, CH3. Like so. Ooh, let's just uh, move that one around. So, is it likely to be that? Well, let's have a look. Um, let's have a look at my ratios there. They look uh, like I've got uh, well, an intensity of around about 2, an intensity of 3, and an intensity of 3. So, let's have a look at this one, first of all. Where I'd expect that to come? Well, it's a CH3 connected to C double bond O. So, I'd expect to see that between 2 and 3, which I do. Um, it comes in at about uh, 2.1 from the looks of things. So that could be that peak there, which makes sense. And it's a singlet, of course, because I haven't got any neighbouring hydrogens next to it. What about uh, this guy here? That's probably the next one. Well, it's C double bond O, and then it's linked to a CH2 group. So from looking at my data sheet, uh, where would I expect that to come? Well, it's going to be in the same kind of area as this one. Um, and what splitting would it have? Well, that's a three hydrogens there. So it'd be split into a quartet. So that's going to be that peak there. And finally, I've got to assign this peak at one. So that's just going to be an RCH3 pretty much. Where do I expect that? Well, that's going to be between one and two or so. Um, and I'd expect it to be a, a triplet because I've got uh, two neighbouring hydrogens there. And indeed, that's what I see there. That is my triplet. So based on uh, that assignment, I would say that is the correct structure. Rightio, so I haven't been given much information for this one. It's C5H12, and there's only two peaks in the carbon NMR. Well, there's quite a few isomers where you could have uh, five carbons. It's obviously an alkane, based on the formula. Um, however, it's only got two carbon environments. Um, and if you play through all the uh, different uh, isomers that you've got, pretty much, well, the only one it's going to come up with is if you have your central carbon there, which is going to give you one peak, and then you surround it by your methyl groups. So it's a highly symmetrical molecule. So you'd see a peak for that carbon there, and you'd also see a peak for these four surrounding carbons, because they're, of course, all in the same environment. Okay, I've got a little bit more information now. Now, that formula is C5H10O, in case you were wondering. Um, and it's told me, quite helpfully, it's given me some IR information there. I've got a peak at 1720 uh, wave numbers. So that's obviously going to tell me it's a got a carbonyl group in it of some sort. Now, my carbon NMR, I have got three peaks. 
So you're looking at it being an aldehyde or a ketone. Um, you've got five carbons. It's going to be pretty symmetrical, isn't it? Because in your carbon NMR, you've only got three peaks. And if you run through it, um, you're going to have CH3, CH2, C double bond O, CH2, CH3. Okay, that's going to give you one peak there. You're going to have a peak from those two there. And he's obviously your carbonyl peak coming in at 210.7 ppm. Okay, so this is a tricky one. Um, it's going to be halogen or alkane uh, from the looks of the formula. Um, relatively complicated hydrogen NMR. Uh, you're going to have a doublet there from the looks of things. You've also got a doublet there and you've got a septet coming in at about 2 um, ppm. Also, so how on earth can we assign that? Well, it looks like you have got one set of hydrogens that are bonded to the carbon which the bromine is bonded for. And the reason I know that is because I've got a peak coming in at about 3.3. Uh, and if you look at your data sheet, you'll see that a hydrogen attached to a carbon, which is also attached to a bromine, comes in between 3 and 4 ppm. So you need to play around with some isomers, basically, um, to see. Um, if you do, uh, you should find that if you have uh, two carbons, well, three carbons in a row like so, and then you're going to have a methyl group coming off there, that's going to become a methyl group. You'll have a hydrogen coming off there, and your bromine there, hydrogen there, and hydrogen there. Let's have a look. What does that come out with? Well, um... We're going to have uh, three signals. That's going to be your first signal. You're also going to have a signal for that guy there, and these two are in the same environment as well. So, three signals. Well, hey, three signals. Let's have a look. So, these guys are going to be the ones that are coming in at about 3.3 uh, ppm. What would I expect them to be uh, split into? Well, they've got one neighbour on the carbon next to them, the little H in the square there, so they would be your doublet. So they are going to be triangle H there. Uh, what about this middle one here? Well, he is going to be split quite a lot, isn't he? It looks like he's split into a uh, septet, which means he's got uh, six carbon, uh, six hydrogens on neighbouring carbons. Um, if you actually look, you've got more than that. Um, it looks like we've lost a little bit of the split in there, and it's a more complicated uh, splitting pattern than that first scene. So, uh, that one there is going to be square H. Um, you often see that. You often see, because, you know, if you think about it, you've got your circle hydrogens and your triangle hydrogens are in different chemical environments, so you don't get a straightforward splitting pattern um, always. Um, and obviously the little lines, um, when you're getting down to this area, uh, the, the lines are quite small, so they're, they're easily lost. Um, so that leaves me with a triangle hydrogen, um, so that's going to be, uh, oh no, sorry, that leaves me with circle hydrogen. So that's going to be that signal there, uh, coming in at just below 1 uh, ppm. What will they be split in to? Well, circle uh, hydrogen. They've got one neighbour on the carbon, which is square H, so it would be split into a doublet. So that is the correct signal, um, which we've been able to assign based on splitting and also chemical shifts. You look at the intensity as well, um, you'd need a ruler. Uh, if you look, um, these are integration uh, uh, signals there coming in. Um, if you measure those with a ruler, that will tell you, that will give you the ratio of the different hydrogen environments, which um, you should find out that they come out as one for square, to two for triangle, to six for circle for the hydrogens as well. Little tricky to do that uh, using this. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Um, I hope you continue to enjoy the wonders of NMR.